Hi everybody, today we are going to take a look at my Chasing Gladius Mini S drone. You know, you take your drone out in the water, sometimes it's murky, sometimes it's sandy, sometimes it's muddy, you know, sometimes it's just plain filthy swamp water. But you have to clean the drone every time you use it. And I don't like the term drone, they call it a drone, it's an ROV. It's a remotely operated vehicle. It's an underwater drone. It's a submarine with a tether that you control from either the shore or from a boat. It's what it is, an ROV. The quickest and easiest way to clean it out is to flush it in a box, bathtub, vat of clear water, like we're doing here. But sometimes that is just plain not enough. It depends how dirty and filthy it was where you were diving. So then you have to open it up and physically clean it out. That's right. How does stuff get inside there? Well, there's vent holes and slots and everything. Everything inside this drone, drone, everything inside this mini submarine, this ROV, is waterproof. In other words, the vehicle itself is not watertight and waterproof. The components within this hard plastic shell, that's what's waterproof. So you have to open it up. It's got a bunch of screws on it. And then someone who's done this before, they will know, there is one of the screws that is not a screwdriver. It is a little... You know, Allen wrench. It, we are weird, right? Look how dirty it is inside there. Yeah, oh, it's filthy. It was really sandy, sandy bottom where I was. Filthy. And this kind of smells swampy too. So you see all that sand and dirt and mud? You need to get that out. So what I do is I take a plastic spoon, I scoop out the bulk of it, and then I rinse it all out. Make sure all the connections are good. Let it dry. Put it back together. Bam, you're ready to go again. Yes, it is kind of weird that it's not watertight as a complete unit. Individual components, the motors and the battery, which we see here center, that's what's watertight. All right, remember, every time you use it, you got to clean it. And then, depending how dirty it is, you might even have to open it up to clean it. And really, it's a good idea for several reasons. Number one, you can look for damage. Make sure things are not leaking. Make sure things aren't damaged, broken, bare wires. Something's going to short you out. Common sense, right? But also, you see the sand and dirt that's in here? That adds considerable amount of weight, which means you're going to sink and not be buoyant, and the motors are going to have to work harder to, to go and to stay afloat, so to speak. And if your sub is always... Resting on the bottom of the lake or the ocean or the river or the pond or the stream or whatever body of water you're in, yes, the motors are going to have to work hard to get it to move, but also it's going to be sucking up and slurping in more sand and dirt like you see here. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle. All right, remember, if you use it, clean it. Leave your comments in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Mr. 22, the most dangerous man on YouTube.